Hi guys, so today we're gonna to quickly talk about strawberries. I've got a few other things to touch on as well, but it's gonna be mostly strawberries. And this is in response to some viewer feedback. So Shannon Ward asked me if I could do a, a strawberry video talking just generally about strawberries and what we're doing with ours and how to look after them, etc., etc. Well, strawberries are one of the easiest plants in the world to take care of. And we will go out and have a look at our strawberry patch in a bit because strawberries are one of those plants where you only need one or two plants and you can populate a whole bed within no time. So we're harvesting at the moment about this many strawberries every single day. And we don't get through them as quickly as we harvest them. So we have to preserve them. And we'll talk about a few ways that we're doing that as well. Now, as regular viewers of my channel will know, I am absolutely flat out at the moment and I'm struggling to keep up with everything. And this does tend to happen this time of year because I've got a full-time job, so is my wife, and everything we try to do here, and you know, we've got quite a bit that we're trying to take care of all the time, uh, it just means that there are lots of jobs that kind of build up, particularly this time of year. One such job is weeding our strawberry bed. So one of the reasons that that job kind of falls to the wayside and doesn't take priority is because strawberries are such a vigorous plant and we have other plants that really require our weeding more urgently, such as our annual vegetable bed. Because out there we've got plants that will really, really struggle with weed competition, same as with our asparagus bed over there. But the strawberries, if it wasn't for the fact that they delivered this amazing fruit that we love, we'd probably consider them a weed because they are just going to take over a patch and, you know, going to just compete with the weeds. And it's not very often we can say that about desirable plants, but strawberries are one of them. Now, of course, they're going to do even better and they're going to thrive and be more productive if they're not competing with the weeds for those nutrients in the ground. But they are a plant that is going to manage. So that's not to say that we won't weed this patch. We absolutely will. But it's just one of those jobs that doesn't get too high up on our priority list when we're so busy. And that's unfortunate for this video because it means I'm not showing you a beautifully manicured strawberry patch. But We'll work with what we've got, not what we wish we had. So here we go, let's have a look. So in this patch here, literally everywhere I look is just teeming with strawberries. And as I say, my wife is harvesting from this patch every single day, every single morning. And we're only a few hours later and at any point in the day we could come here and there'll be strawberries still. We never get them all, there's just too many. And that's fine, you know, we're harvesting more than we need for our requirements. They're just such, a vigorous plant and this whole patch what I really wanted to share with you this whole patch just two years ago maybe three years ago but I think two years ago was just five or six plants and uh, we started it with just three plants we put one in that corner one in the front here and one in that corner we've actually got three different varieties which are supposed to fruit at slightly different times through the year but they've all intermingled and spread amongst themselves so the reason we're here is i want to talk a little bit about how strawberries propagate let me see if i can find a uh, clear enough patch for me to show you easily okay so i've just managed to weed this little section down here to show you some things and one of the advantages of weeding it, if you can keep it clear, is just you're going to get much more fruit because you're going to be able to see it. As a great example, look, over here, there's all this fruit down here, which has just been missed because of all the weeds we have. Now, for me, everything is about a balance. It's a balance between workload, effort, you know, inputs. And when I'm talking inputs, I mean our time and our energy as well. You've got to balance that with the outputs and the yields. So, you know, as it happens, we have been harvesting more than enough from this bed without the effort that weeding would have represented. And we just haven't had the time. However, you know, I, that's not to say this is the best way. I would absolutely love to have this whole bed weeded and we'd be harvesting twice the amount, I suspect, in probably less time. So what I'm actually hoping to do I'm, I'm awful. Once I start weeding, I find it really difficult to stop. I've actually got to leave and go to work shortly, so I don't have time to do any more. But uh, maybe when I get back later, I will uh, dig in and get the rest of this bed done because it's a lovely feeling when it's done. Anyway, that's by the by. So 
one of the things that strawberries do that make them so prolific and makes them fantastic at proliferating a whole bed is they actually steal a trick from some of our more pernicious weeds. They do something called tip layering and send out shoots that basically go and form another plant. There are lots of plants and berries that we can do this with sort of deliberately by taking some stem, some uh, side shoot and just sort of digging it into the ground. But strawberries do this consistently and continually and they actually send out runners, something called runners with the specific intent of forming a new plant. And down here, I'll show you. So this here is a very young plant. As you can see, it's fairly small, but even this young plant, probably around a year old at the most has already sent out this runner and if we follow it we'll see that at this end this here is going to be a new strawberry plant that's the roots just starting to come out there can you see so we'll put him back where he was although to be honest you know there's probably two or three hundred of those if not more in that little bed already doing that thing and forming next year and the year after strawberries. So all you need to do really is get out of the way and let the plant do its thing. You know, give it a nice big space and just let it do its thing. And then you find that you're actually going to be weeding not only the weeds, but also the additional plants from your strawberry bed. Now, again, something else you might want to think about is every four or five years when a plant's sort of productivity starts to dip, you might want to replace it with some of the runners. It's super, super simple. Once you've bought a strawberry plant, you will have hundreds of strawberry plants within a few years and you don't need to buy any more. The only thing you might want to do is buy some different varieties like we did. So we get a longer harvest period because of those different varieties. There you go. That is the, the, the sort of the how-to insofar as getting strawberry plants and propagating them and making lots and lots. Now, the only other thing to say is, like I say, this bed has been established for between two and three years. I think probably three years ago, roughly, or just under three years ago, we would have planted our very first three plants. And, you know, we harvested not only the strawberries, but the actual plants themselves. Last year, we took around 200 plants out of this space and sold them at the side of the road. And it's as simple as it sounds to do that. You know, you just dig up some of the runners or some of the established plants and put them in little pots. You know, they are an abundant plant that's gonna just give and give and give not only the fruit, but additional plants as well. And once you've got all that abundance and you've got all that fruit and you've got a little bit more than you know what to do with, then you're gonna to need to start thinking about preserving it. One of the awesome things about strawberries is they're so easy to preserve and there's so many different ways of doing it and they're all super, super simple. You don't need a pressure canner. You don't need hours of time. It's, you know, really, really simple. While we're going in to look at our preservation methods, just take a minute to press that like button. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you're not already. And uh, why don't you leave me a comment? Certainly let me know how you're preserving strawberries and uh, you know what your crops look like okay so here we've got our strawberries that we're about to preserve today and we're going to use our dehydrator for these ones but something else we do a lot of is make strawberry compote now this is so so simple and i've actually shared this on previous videos i'm not sure whereabouts in my video catalog you'll find it but probably in my yogurt making videos because we use that compote as flavoring for yogurts and ice creams. This here is a raspberry compote and we use it for all sorts of soft fruits. And the recipe is super, super simple. Basically, you wanna take 250 grams of fruit and for every 250 grams of fruit, you add two big tablespoons of honey and you pop that in a saucepan, bring it up to a rolling boil, keep stirring it until the fruit breaks down. And then basically you add one tablespoon of diluted corn flour, just diluted in water, pour that in and then cook it for another five or six minutes. And what you'll end up with is this deliciously thick compote, which you can use fresh, keep in the fridge for a good couple of weeks because it's got that honey in it, which is a preservative or you can freeze it for longer term storage. And we do all of those things. But what we're gonna do right now with the rest of these is we're gonna put them in our dehydrator. So 
So there you go, that's three full trays of sliced strawberries all ready to be dehydrated. And I absolutely love dehydrated strawberries. They basically, whenever you dehydrate fruit, it, it just intensifies the sweetness and the flavor and it, they just come out like sweets, like uh, little candies or sweets. And I just think that it's an amazing way of preserving things because it doesn't take up any freezer space and it's so, so simple. So we're gonna turn this on now. We've got that set to 45 degrees for eight hours and we'll come back and check on that later when it's done. But um, we will then save that in just these Kilner jars, just sterilized glass jars. And you know, they look nice up on the shelf there. They take up very little space. They don't require freezer space. That's really, really crucial because I'm about to butcher a pig and that's gonna take up a fairly big space in our freezer. We can't afford to be giving over too much freezer space for things that we can preserve easily in other ways. And this is definitely one of them. So we will absolutely be preserving some of the compote in the freezer, but only as much as we think we need to meet our needs. Now, the other thing to say is, if you don't have time even to do that, what you can do is just freeze the strawberries as they are. Now, they're not going to defrost and have that lovely firm texture that you would associate with a fresh strawberry, but if you're going to freeze them for use later to do things like jam making or making the compots, that's gonna work fantastically. So you can just freeze the strawberries right now and then deal with them a little bit later when you've got a bit more time by making compots or using you know, recipes that require strawberries, anything where you're expecting the strawberry to break down anyway. And uh, what we're gonna get from here is strawberries that we can use in things like toppings for breakfast cereals, or if I chop up the dried strawberries really, really fine, they go amazingly in our strawberry yogurts. So that's our dried strawberries. That's lots of ways you can preserve them. We all know about strawberry jam, which is another way, obviously, you can preserve them. But uh, hopefully there's a couple of extra ones there that maybe you hadn't thought about. So thanks for watching, guys. And please make sure you press that like button, subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment down below. And the last thing I want to say before I sign off is that on Sunday's live stream, there were quite a few people that requested Egyptian walking onions. I'm posting those out today to those of you who followed up with the email with your address in. And a few of you that asked for them in the live stream didn't actually follow up with that email. So this is a quick reminder to you guys. If I haven't replied to you in an email saying they're on their way or, you know, I'm hopefully posting them this week, then I haven't got your address. So uh, make sure you get in touch. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll speak to you all really soon. Cheers.